Assalamu alaikum, peace and blessings everybody. Welcome to our program, Olive Branch. I am Fatma Lodi. And I am Nicole. We will be your hosts for today. Our program today is about Osama bin Laden in the U.S. in context of history. As many as you know, Osama bin Laden was recently killed on May 1st, 2011 in Abbottabad, Pakistan. A lot has been said in the media about what is going on, but we felt it was important to address certain questions the community has. We have Professor Faison Huck here, who teaches Islamic study courses at UB and intercultural communication at Buffalo State College. He will be here to address some very important questions that the community has. Also joining us is Andrew Kirschmeyer, who is a student at Buffalo State College. So Faison, the first question on many people's minds is, what led to the killing of Osama bin Laden? Uh, before we go there, we have to look at the context of history that how the U.S. connection developed with uh, um, Osama bin Laden and what was the um, what was the background. So, if you allow me, I'm going. I have prepared a slideshow that I would like to go over. So, the first thing we see is that um, Osama bin Laden's early life is everybody has known about this. A lot of media outlets are going over these details. But just to summarize in a minute or so, he was born in 1957. Uh, he was 17th son among over 52 brothers and sisters. Osama had his primary, secondary, and university education in Jeddah, which is in Saudi Arabia. He had a degree in civil engineering from King Abdul Aziz University in Jeddah. And bin Laden left Saudi Arabia in 1979 to fight against the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. And this is where the connection, the first connection we see that builds up between him the jihadi movements and also the involvement of the U.S. because the Soviets at that time was actually going through the socialist expansion. And so we look at this map and the Russian interest, if you see Russia was this big huge country sitting on the top of the world and they wanted to have access to Afghanistan and at that time the other small countries you see Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan and I'm going to point them out. Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan, these countries were not uh, free. They were part of the Soviet Socialist Republic. So, and there, and, and if we see all these water around Soviet Union, these are actually cold water, they're not warm water. So their, in, their interest was to get into Afghanistan, and from Afghanistan to get through Pakistan, get into the Arabian Sea. And why Arabian Sea was important for the Soviets was that this is where the oil routes were. This is where the oil supply of the world comes through these channels. So you see these lines, they actually show that how the oils were being taken from Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and on this side, and this end also, um, and, and they wanted access to it and the intentions were to build easy ac energy access lines for Soviet Union, number one, give, provide them with a port on warm waters, and number three, to be able to at will choke the supply line for the West. And this is why for the U.S. and for the allies of the United States of America, it was very important to counter the Soviet expansion into Afghanistan. And this is what happened when Soviets invaded Afghanistan. The millions and millions of Afghani refugees, they poured out to the neighboring countries. The most number of Afghani refugees actually came to Pakistan. Over five million refugees in that country, which have very meager resources. It, was a, it created a huge law and order situation in Pakistan. And in the beginning, there was not much interest of the U.S. Actually, the interest of the U.S. developed a little later. And by that time, um, uh, bin Laden has left Saudi Arabia in 1979 to resist against the Afghan resistance. He was also, um, at that time, under the influence of a clergy from Palestine um, named Sheikh Azam. And he was the one who actually um, provided him with, uh, um, with ideological framework to deal with the 
to organize a terrorist or not but at that time mujahideens the resistance movement rebellions but azam sheikh azam was against using this organization for terrorist purposes and he was also against using and spreading that struggle to other countries or taking it internationally and there was a point where as we see there was a division or split between azam and osama bin laden eventually osama uh, azam or uh, sheikh azam was killed in peshawar in a bomb blast uh, some people accuse Osama for that, but there's no proof because he was out of the country at that time. And this was a time when uh, the direction of Osama bin Laden has shifted, and it's a huge Egyptian um, extremist influence has entered his life through Sheikh Zawahri or Dr. Zawahri al Zawahri, as he's called, who was actually uh, broken away faction from Islamic Brotherhood in Egypt. And there was a huge, we see there was a huge um, uh, Islamic jihadi element that has actually started going into Al-Qaeda. And this was a shift from Osama bin Laden, and he actually had uh, started organizing this thing. He had success. He fought on the grounds. He has had a good following. He, had, he commanded respect among his followers because they thought he was brave. He was charismatic, and at the same time, he, um, you know, he put the money where his mouth was. He brought in his money, his resources. And um, in, in 1989, uh, when he returned back to Saudi Arabia, he was actually welcomed as a hero in Saudi Arabia. Um, and that was also the time, if you remember, uh, it was July of 19, August of 1990, when Iraq invaded Kuwait. At that time, Osama bin Laden offered Saudi Arabia that, you know, we can handle Iraq and Saddam Hussein, so we will invite our fighters from Afghanistan and they will resist against the, um, against the invasion of, the, of Saddam Hussein and we will be able to overcome uh, um, this occupation of Kuwait. But his offer was turned down and instead America was invited in as the, um, as the as a coalition of the free who came and they started the great um, Desert Shield uh, operation that turned into Desert Storm when we, you know, United States of America, we fought with Iraq um, with the help of allies. And Osama bin Laden did not take it lightly because he thought there's an occupation of the Holy Land uh, by non-Muslims and uh, he thought that uh, the American intentions or the Western intentions are not clear, so we should not fall into this uh, and we should do something about this. And this is the time when he actually turned against the royal family and he was actually forced to run away from Saudi Arabia and he ended up in Peshawar, Pakistan. See. Go ahead. Anything else, or should I, should I keep? Should well, I keep going? if you want to maybe continue to what led to um, the attacks, maybe his death, then yeah, then we had some questions as well that we sure. Like answer. After that, actually, um, uh, because uh, at at that time, uh, the time when the first attack that took place against U.S. troops were in 1993, which is October 3rd and 4th, and that was uh, when um, uh, U.S. troops were killed. Um, and uh, Osama bin Laden has come into picture as a person who's leading such a group. Uh, then um, this was 1994 when the Saudi government actually revoked his citizenship and his assets were freezed and he was actually, um, now it was very clear that the Saudis are at war or Saudi establishment is at war with Osama bin Laden. This was also the time when Americans have identified Osama bin Laden as one of the heads of the mo one of the most dangerous terrorist organization, Al Qaeda, and during this time we also see that uh, um, he has been able to successfully recruit a lot of people because he was good at it. This is why he was employed or he was engaged not only by the Saudis and um, by the Allies but also by the United States of America against the Soviets because he was successful in doing such things. Um, and because of his, uh, um, his, his influence, uh, he was uh, able to, um, because of his influence, he was able to exert political influence within Pakistan as well. So much so that he actually 
uh, started a lobbying effort to pass a um, um, no confidence vote against the Prime Minister at that time, Benazir Bhutto, who was later on killed in 2007. And that credit has been taken by um, the forces who have sympathies for Al-Qaeda as well. Uh, it, so it was, a, it was an effort on his part to exert his influence. And, uh, um, and during this time, he found a sanctuary in Afghanistan because Afghanistan was in a great need of money to reconstruct. And the Taliban government, which has recently acquired the control of Afghanistan, actually they wanted the recognition of money, but money came from nowhere because they blatantly refused everywhere else, including by United States of America. And this was the time when he came in with his money and influence. and. Uh, he basically um, took over the country. So what is the connection between the Taliban and Al-Qaeda? The connection between Al-Qaeda and Taliban is that Talibans were the movement that s sprang out of madrasas in Pakistan. Uh, these were the Afghans, um, uh, orphans or Afghan students who were under education there. And they came out. They wanted to get their homeland back and, put them and, and have a law and order situation in control. And they were actually f first of all used as bodyguards, who were actually would be with the envoys who will go through Afghanistan. But later on, they saw the need, and they actually took over the country. And people were actually very glad they did, but they did not have the resources. And their resources, which they were expecting, did not come through. The only few countries recognized them, which was Pakistan, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and such countries. But since they could not get any recognition from United Nations, they kept looking for resources, so resources came Osama with Osama bin Laden. And because of his camaraderie in the past with the Afghan movement, he was able to uh, exert his influence, and he found a safe haven in Afghanistan. And then from there on, we heard that, you know, as we know, that September 11th took place, and then he was m a marked man, and uh, America invaded Afghanistan with the help of the allies and as a coalition of the willing. Uh, and during this time, he hid out into the mountains, uh, same place where he won his first battle against the Soviet Union. And then uh, we know the history that he, you know, we have been hunting them, hunting him, and finally uh, he was captured in in Abbottabad. Can I go back to um, the connection between um, Osama bin Laden and the Taliban? Um, it, was there any evidence um, that Osama bin Laden or his men actually trained the Taliban? Like, how much influence was there? A lot of exchange of money? Uh, was there exchange of weaponry for the Taliban to become established? Actually, um, uh, one of the um, disagreements between Sheikh Azam and Osama bin Laden was where to, s because he wanted to use those sanctuaries which was built by his bin Laden construction company in Afghanistan, uh, the whole, the whole uh, infrastructure for struggle to set up, use that base camps for the sake of Al-Qaeda's training. And he was doing Afghan's training by Al-Qaeda was being done even before, uh, when the, during the Soviets, um, towards the end of the Soviet occupation. Because Al-Qaeda as an organization comes to the surface after, the, after or towards the end of the so of of the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan. So Taliban's, when they were moving into Afghanistan, they were taking over control. Al-Qaeda fighters actually volunteered at times, provided them um, uh, logistics, provided them support. So they were in debt to Osama bin Laden for that. But when they did not, and they could not get any recognition from international community, this was the time when he moved in. And hence, a very intense and very close relationship was developed with the Taliban. And Taliban and Al Qaeda almost became synonymous because there was, uh, there was so much cooperation among the two. But Al Qaeda itself remained, most of the people who were fighting on the behalf of Al Qaeda were actually recruited either from Middle East or North Africa or elsewhere. And there were some Afghan elements and Pakistanis and other people, even people from India, other places where people were there. Even people from Tajikistan, Central Asia were there. But mostly it was a movement that was spearheaded by him. And the core of the movement remained um, uh, Middle Eastern or Egyptian. 
So does eliminating Osama break down Al-Qaeda's leadership and organization, thus weakening any potential future attacks? Actually, um, uh, uh, when he was um, uh, implementing the recruitment of, of people for Al-Qaeda, he, uh, he and Sheikh Hazm, they had these recruiting, I wouldn't say recruiting centers, but they had these people all over the world who were actually gathering support for the Mujahideens to fight against the Soviets. So after, the, in the absence of Sheikh Azam, the same network started, you know, he started using and utilizing it for his purposes. And, um, and in that one of the ideas that was implemented that uh, was that what we should do is, uh, that means Al-Qaeda thought that what they should do is that they should be able to um, uh, uh, have different areas work independently as long as there is a unity of purpose that we are supposed to do certain things it's okay uh, they you, they can work independently but however the main um, uh, collaboration or main um, uh, planning will be done by 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 the heads and 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 for some time as most of a lot of analysts and experts believe that for most time he was not the one who was calling the shots. Actually, it was second in command, Sheikh Al Zawahiri or Doctor Al Zawahiri, and uh, a few other people who were with him. They were actually running the show for him. But he, or the kind of person he was, it is. It will not be. Um, uh, it, it will not be an appropriate assumption that he was not involved. He must have been involved. He was kind of person who will involve strategically approve things and go over because he was detail oriented person. So he was you know he was able to control his movement. So Andrew, I know you're a student at Buffalo State College. What's uh, what questions do students have and stuff? Um well I know a few questions that I have uh I've come here with. Uh, how prevalent is Taliban activity in Pakistan? Taliban's are quite active um, in the northeastern part of Pakistan, especially which is adjacent to uh, Afghanistan. And there has been a movement, uh, there has been effort by Pakistani government and Pakistani military to contain them in that area. But Taliban movements have many factions. One faction is which is very sympathetic to Al-Qaeda. And they have been uh, they, they have been actually active in uh, in armed struggle and resistance against the U.S. and the allies' um, presence in Afghanistan and as well as in Pakistan. And those are the Taliban's who actually we are actively engaged with, uh, United States of America. Then there are the um, Taliban's who are considered kind of a moderate Taliban's they don't want the foreign influence they are but they're willing to work with the authorities as long as uh, they're um, that they, they are given a participation in the system and uh, even our um, secretary uh, of foreign affairs uh, our uh, you know Hillary Clinton has uh, um, said that uh, you know we are we are interested in dealing with those people who might be willing to work with us but that is a separate Taliban faction. And then there are Pakistani Taliban movement, which, which is uh, also focused and concentrated in northeastern area. But their focus, um, th their relationship with Al-Qaeda has been severed. Um, uh, their, their capability of striking within Pakistan has been compromised because Pakistani military, Pakistani law um, establishment has been on the hunt, uh, and and they have been, uh, you know, they they have suffered quite losses, many losses, and actually many Taliban leadership, including the Taliban and Al Qaeda leadership that has been, um, that has provided the information that eventually led to the capture of Osama bin Laden, came through those people who were actually either caught or captured by Pakistani law enforcement agents. So is it expected that members of the Taliban will retaliate with the killing of Osama bin Laden? Yes, there have been, uh, they have issued warnings and they have been issued, issued notices. I uh, would expect, uh, or at least, uh, you know, that there will be some retaliation. However, I think uh, m before United States of America did such a daring act, and before, you know, this accomplishment of uh, taking Osama bin Laden, they uh, must have prepared themselves 
for this. And I know that uh, uh, the security alerts are very high in Pakistan, and so, is, so are they in the United States of America. But, I, uh, but at the same time, I think there has been, Al-Qaeda has, um, has been hit hard, and their capabilities have diminished tremendously. And especially with capture of Osama bin Laden, uh, all the infrastructure that he was in control of, all the resources that he controlled are gone because each person in that organization had their own assets and they had their own infrastructure and organization in place. So it definitely is a great loss for them. I have a question. Um, how are the people in Pakistan reacting to American military operations happening within their own borders? Are they mad at their government about it? They are. Um, there are several aspects to it. The number one, they are, they are very um, upset about this is that how come a foreign force comes and violates the airfield of a country, uh, you know, um, airspace of the country for 40 minutes coming in and 40 minutes going back and then doing their operation, whatever they need to do, and Pakistani Air Force was unaware. Actually, the head of Pakistani Air Force has accept has accepted the responsibility of this that that you know we are responsible for it, and there's going to be a lot of pressure on Pakistani military to explain this. So there, that is the that aspect. The second aspect is there's always the conspiracy theory that you know if Osama was captured, where his dead body, it's so convenient that the dead body was just thrown into mm -hmm. an ocean. So there's a lot of skepticism about that. And then third part is that. Uh, p uh, partly people in Pakistan are relieved. They are just, you know, thank God, it's over in mm -hmm. the way that, uh, you know, maybe this will be the beginning of an end and there will be closure to Afghan jihad and finally people will go home, including United States of America and allies. Their intensity of involvement in that will get reduced. Okay. Recently, President Obama said that he will not be releasing the photos of Osama bin Laden. Do you think Americans have a right to see these photos, or and do you think they should be released? I think I um, probably will uh, agree with President Obama on this. It is that, and he said, and you know, I really uh, appreciate what he said about this when he was asked. He said, "This is not, uh, this is not who we are," and uh, and which is absolutely, you know, true. Um, even if you produce the pictures, the people who believe in conspiracy theory, they're going to continue to believe and say this was a makeup, this was made up. So why even bother, number one? Number two, if we have accomplished this task, we have accomplished this. We got to move on. We got to, I think, Afghanistan and Pakistan, these countries need our help. Uh, we got to stay engaged. We got to make sure that we are, we are moving forward. Um, and, uh, um, and, and showing photographs, I don't think that is really a priority. I think the pr priority is that how to reconnect with those people whom we have lost. And I personally think that drone attacks must be stopped because what we found out in this, it was actually human intelligence that led to Osama bin Laden. It was human intervention that got him. And there were no unnecessary, unnecessary civilian casualties in this operation. Earlier you had stated that um, with the killing of Osama bin Laden that the power structure of Al-Qaeda has now been broken down. So is this a major U.S. victory? Um, because on the media I haven't really been hearing politicians saying, oh, now the job's done, we're almost winning this war. What's your opinion? I don't think, I, you know, it's not the final victory, but I think it is a major accomplishment. It is, uh, nonetheless, we have to give, commend ourselves, uh, especially our armed forces that they were able to accomplish this thing because it's it's not an easy to do such a job, especially with the, with the, with Pakistani military on the alert and all that I think it was an it was a major achievement nonetheless uh, politically of course um, that struggle will continue and we have to make sure that uh, we we are safe and we are engaged in a constructive way with both countries and we cannot afford to leave that area completely. We have to stay engaged and we have to keep investing in the lives of people. So what do you see for the future of Muslims in America? Will this make their relationship harder or easier or where do you see Muslims? I think the Muslims in America still have to struggle and probably there has to be another program in which we can discuss this. I, uh, but, but it is definitely a moment of relief for them as well because as you know many Muslim lives were lost in 9-11, it's a closure for them. 
and uh, this um, this association of uh, Muslims with uh, you know with the troublemakers and terrorists it has to end because we are way beyond that. Muslims have worked so hard, have given so many sacrifices uh, in the struggle, and uh, their their contribution is is, is second to none. And uh, what about Barack Obama? What do you think? is in store for his future. How do you think this will affect him? I think it's a, um, it's a great boost for him because he was able to accomplish which President Bush wasn't able to accomplish. And, and the reason he was able to accomplish this because he was focused. He did not divert his attention by invading another country as in President Bush did by atta attacking Iraq. Isn't it fair to say that Clinton also had a chance to capture Osama bin Laden? Yeah, I heard about that, that, uh, that Clinton had, but he, um, he missed the opportunity. But, you know, it is very easy to say those things. But when you are in that seat and you're making executive decisions, there are a lot of things that you have to consider. Well, that was very insightful. Thank you, Professor Huck, for joining us and offering our viewers valuable information. Thank you. At the bottom of our screen, there is an email that you can contact if you would like more information. And that email is olivebranch at wnymuslims.org. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We are Western New York Muslims. We use westernnewyorkmuslims.org to be connected. For reviews on the latest restaurants and movies. To use Western New York Muslims Classified to sell my old school books, DVDs, and old clothes. To have a place to expose those who are intolerant of Islam and to commend those who portray it correctly. To increase my deen or faith. To learn more about the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. To find great information on Islamic scholarship funds. To have open dialogue with Muslims and non-Muslims in the community. For the prayer time. To ask an imam important questions about my faith. To learn about Islam. To be updated on births, deaths, and marriages in the community. To find great support groups that guide me as a new convert to Islam. To be informed about the latest upcoming events in the community. To find great local halal restaurants and food markets. For helpful information for new residents of Western New York. And to express yourself creatively with blogs, articles, pictures, any sort of multimedia you want. If you wish to become a user to get connected to the community, then please register at www.wnymuslims.org. Connecting communities through diversity, awareness, and service. We hope this website is useful and encourages the community to stay together. 